Hey World X Force Explorers, welcome to another epic adventure. Today we journey with William, Kenny, and Anthony as they step into a mystical parallel universe filled with wisdom and wonder. If you love captivating stories and thrilling quests, you're in the right place. Don't forget to smash that like button, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe to join our ever-growing community of adventurers. Now, let's dive into the story. William, Kenny, and Anthony had been friends since childhood. Growing up in a small town, their days were filled with adventure, curiosity, and the shared love for exploring the unknown. William, the introspective leader, often pondered the mysteries of the universe. Kinney, with his boundless energy and humor, was the glue that kept the group together. Anthony, the quiet thinker, found solace in the serenity of nature. One sunny afternoon, the trio decided to hike through the old forest near their town, a place rumored to harbor ancient secrets. The dense trees and the whispering winds added an air of mystery to their journey. As they ventured deeper, Kenny stumbled upon an old, ornate compass, partially buried under a pile of leaves. Look at this, it must be really old. Kenny exclaimed, dusting off the compass. William took it from him, inspecting it closely. There's something written here, he said, squinting at the faded inscriptions. In another language, I think, Anthony, who had a knack for languages, took a closer look. It's Latin. It says, portal to the opposite. The friends exchanged curious glances. What do you think it means? Only one way to find out, William said, his adventurous spirit ignited. They followed the direction the compass pointed, which led them to a secluded clearing. In the center of the clearing was an ancient stone arch covered in vines and moss. As they approached, the compass began to glow, and the archway shimmered with an otherworldly light. Should we go through? Anthony asked, a mix of excitement and apprehension in his voice. William nodded. We've come this far. Let's see what's on the other side. Hand in hand, the three friends stepped through the archway. They were enveloped in a blinding light, and when it faded, they found themselves in a world unlike any they had ever seen. The sky was a deep, shimmering indigo, and the trees were silver with leaves of gold. The air buzzed with an energy that made their skin tingle. Everything seemed familiar yet profoundly different as if they had stepped into a mirror image of their world. Kenny said, his eyes wide with wonder. This is incredible, Anthony asked, looking around. I think we're in another universe, an opposite universe. As they began to explore this strange new world, they realized they were not alone. Where are we? The path through the opposite universe was fraught with unexpected challenges and wonders. The trio marveled at the vibrant flora and fauna, each creature and plant exuding an aura of harmony and peace. However, they also sensed an underlying test in every step they took, as if the universe itself was observing and evaluating their intentions. Their first significant encounter came in the form of a village inhabited by beings similar to the Guardians, but these villagers appeared troubled their faces were etched with worry, and the once harmonious aura was tinged with discord. What's wrong? William asked a villager named Arya, whose eyes reflected a deep sadness. Our village is in turmoil. We have lost the ability to communicate truthfully and respectfully. Lies and harsh words have torn our community apart. William remembered Lyra's words about the Four Agreements. We're here to learn the Four Agreements. Maybe we can help. If you can restore our village's harmony, we would be eternally grateful. The friends decided to start with the first agreement. Be impeccable with your word. They gathered the villagers in the town square and explained the importance of speaking truthfully and with integrity. 
Words have power. They can create or destroy, heal, or harm. Being impeccable with your word means using language to uplift and not to hurt. It also means no more sarcasm or gossip. Trust me, it'll make life a lot easier. The villagers listened intently and slowly. They began to practice this new way of communication. It wasn't easy, old habits die hard, but with William Kinney and Anthony's guidance, they started to see the change. Conversations became more honest, and the community grew closer. One evening, Arya approached them, her eyes shining with gratitude. Our village is healing because of you. The power of truthful words has restored our harmony. As the villagers celebrated their renewed unity, William felt a profound sense of accomplishment. They had successfully embraced the first agreement, and the impact was tangible. That's one down. Three more to go. The next morning, as they set off, Lyra appeared once more. You have done well. But remember, the journey ahead will be more challenging. Stay true to the agreements and the principles of the Tao, and you will find your way. With Lyra's words echoing in their minds, the trio ventured forth, ready to tackle the next agreement and the lessons it would bring. Leaving the village, William, Kenny, and Anthony found themselves traversing a dense forest. The air was thick with the scent of pine and the sound of rustling leaves. As they walked, The second agreement is, don't take anything personally. Anthony said, reading from a parchment Lyra had given them. That sounds tough. I mean, it's hard not to take things personally, especially when someone's being a jerk. Greetings, travelers. I am Zarek. We are the Vulpini, guardians of this forest. We need your help. William nodded. But it's important. If we take everything personally, we let others control our emotions. Their conversation was interrupted by a sudden rustling in the bushes. Out stepped a group of creatures that looked like a cross between humans and foxes. Their eyes gleamed with intelligence, and they moved with a fluid grace. Our people are plagued by fear and resentment. Every comment, every action is taken personally, leading to constant conflict. What's the problem? William asked. William saw an opportunity to practice the second agreement. We can help but it will require understanding and effort from everyone. The friends gathered the Vulpini and began to teach them the importance of not taking things personally. What others say and do is a reflection of their own reality, not yours. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. It's like having a shield. You don't let the negativity in. You focus on your own actions and reactions. The Vulpini were skeptical at first, but they agreed to try. Over the next few days, William, Kenny, and Anthony guided them through various exercises, helping them to see that their worth was not determined by others' opinions. One particularly stubborn Vulpini, a warrior named Kyle, struggled the most. He was quick to anger and took every slight personally. But through patience and persistence, the friends helped him to see that his anger was harming him more than anyone else. During a training session, Kale finally had a breakthrough. I see now. I've been giving others power over me by taking everything personally. I need to find my strength within. The change in Kyle had a ripple effect. Other Volpini saw his transformation and were inspired to change as well. Conflicts diminished and the forest resonated with a new harmony. As they prepared to leave, Zarek thanked them. You have given us a precious gift. We will strive to live by these agreements. William felt a sense of pride and fulfillment. They were making a difference one step at a time. With the second agreement mastered, they continued their journey, eager to face the next challenge. The path ahead led us to a tranquil valley where a river wound its way through lush meadows. The serenity of the place was almost tangible, and we took a moment to rest by the riverbank. The third agreement is, don't make assumptions, he said, reviewing the parchment. Making assumptions often leads to misunderstandings and conflicts. It's important to communicate clearly and seek clarity. As we discussed the third agreement, we noticed a village in the distance. 
the villagers seemed to be engaged in heated arguments, their voice carrying across the valley. Curious and concerned, we decided to investigate. The village was in disarray. People were arguing over trivial matters, and the air was thick with tension. The village elder, a wise old man named Elian, approached us with a weary expression. We're here to learn and teach the four agreements. We believe the third agreement, don't make assumptions, can help your village. Elian's eyes brightened with hope. Welcome travelers. Our village is in turmoil. Misunderstandings and assumptions have torn us apart. If you can help us, we would be eternally grateful. We gathered the villagers and began to explain the third agreement. Assumptions are dangerous. When we make assumptions, we believe them to be true without evidence. This leads to misunderstandings and conflicts. Instead of assuming, ask questions, communicate clearly, and seek understanding. It's the only way to prevent unnecessary conflicts. The villagers were initially resistant, but with our guidance, they began to see the wisdom in the third agreement. They practiced asking questions and clarifying their intentions. And slowly, the tension in the village began to dissipate. One particular villager, a young woman named Lila, struggled the most with this change. She had been hurt by assumptions in the past and found it hard to trust others. But with our support, she began to see the value in clear communication. During a village meeting, Lila spoke up. I realized that many of our conflicts stem from assumptions. We assume the worst in each other without seeking the truth. We need to change that. Her words resonated with the villagers, and they committed to practicing the third agreement. Over time, the village transformed, relationships healed, and the community grew stronger and more united. As we prepared to leave, Elian thanked us. You have brought peace to our village. We will continue to live by these agreements and teach them to future generations. I felt a deep sense of accomplishment. We had successfully embraced the third agreement and seen its positive impact. With renewed determination, we continued our journey, ready to face the final agreement and the lessons it would bring. Part 5. The Fourth Agreement the friends journeyed onward, following a winding path that led them to the base of a majestic mountain. The air was crisp and invigorating, and the landscape was breathtakingly beautiful. As they ascended the mountain, they discussed the final agreement. The fourth agreement is always do your best. That sounds straightforward enough, but I bet it's not as easy as it seems. To truly understand the fourth agreement, you must experience it. Join us in our daily routines and practices. Learn what it means to give your best in every moment. William nodded. Doing our best means giving our all, regardless of the circumstances. It's about effort and intention, not perfection. As they climbed higher, they encountered a group of monks living in a secluded monastery. The monks welcomed them warmly and invited them to stay. The head monk, a wise and serene man named Master Shen, sensed their purpose and offered his guidance. The friends accepted the challenge and immersed themselves in the monk's way of life. They practiced meditation, engaged in physical labor, and participated in communal activities. The work was demanding, and there were moments of frustration and doubt, but they persevered. One evening, as they gathered around a fire, Master Shen spoke to them. Doing your best is not about achieving perfection. It's about putting forth your best effort, no matter the task or the outcome. When you give your all, you live without regret. William reflected on his journey. He realized that doing his best meant being present in each moment, embracing challenges with an open heart, and striving to grow and learn. It was a lesson in humility and perseverance. Kenny, who had always approached life with humor and enthusiasm, found a deeper sense of purpose. I get it now. Doing my best means finding joy in the effort, not just the results. Anthony, the quiet thinker, discovered the power of mindfulness. It's about being fully engaged in whatever we do, no matter how small or insignificant it seems. 
With the monk's guidance, the friends mastered the fourth agreement. They felt a profound sense of fulfillment and readiness to complete their journey. As they prepared to leave the monastery, Master Shen blessed them. You have learned well. The four agreements and the principles of the Tao will guide you on your path. May you find your way home with wisdom and grace. Part 6. The Principles of the Tao Their journey led them to a sacred grove, where the air was thick with the scent of blooming flowers and the gentle sound of flowing water. It was here that they would learn the principles of the Tao. Lyra appeared once more, her presence radiant and calming. You have done well to learn the Four Agreements. Now it is time to understand the principles of the Tao. The Tao is about living in harmony with the natural order of the universe. It is about balance, simplicity, and humility. She led them to a serene pond where they sat in quiet contemplation. The first principle is Wu Wei. It means non-action or effortless action. It is about flowing with the natural course of events rather than forcing outcomes. William, Kenny, and Anthony practiced Wu Wei by observing the world around them and moving in harmony with its rhythms. They learned to let go of control and trust in the natural flow of life. The second principle is simplicity. It is about finding joy in the simple things and letting go of excess and complexity. The friends embraced simplicity by living minimally and appreciating the beauty of nature. They found contentment in the present moment and realized that true happiness comes from within. The third principle is compassion. It is about understanding and kindness towards all beings. They practice compassion by helping those in need and showing empathy towards others. They learned that compassion was not just an emotion, but a way of living that brought peace and harmony. The final principle is humility. It is about recognizing our place in the universe and being humble in our actions and thoughts. The friends practiced humility by acknowledging their limitations and seeking wisdom from others. They realized that true strength comes from humility and that every experience is an opportunity for growth. With Lyra's guidance, they mastered the principles of the Tao. They felt a deep sense of peace and understanding, ready to return to their world. Part 7. The Return Home With their new knowledge and wisdom, the friends made their way back to the ancient stone arch. The compass that had guided them here now glowed brightly signaling their readiness to return home. As they stepped through the archway, they were enveloped in a blinding light once more. When the light faded, they found themselves back in the familiar forest near their hometown. The air was filled with the sounds of birds and the rustling of leaves, Kenny said, looking around with a sense of wonder. Anthony nodded. We're back. William smiled, feeling a deep sense of fulfillment. We've learned the four agreements and the principles of the Tao. We're ready to live by them and share them with others. Their journey had transformed them. They returned to their daily lives with a newfound sense of purpose and wisdom. They shared their experiences and teachings with their community helping others to live more harmoniously and with greater understanding. Their adventure had taught them that true wisdom comes from within and that living in harmony with oneself and the world is the path to peace and fulfillment. William, Kenny, and Anthony had embarked on a journey of discovery and returned as heroes, not just in their own eyes, but in the eyes of those they had touched with their newfound wisdom. Their story was a testament to the power of friendship, courage, and the timeless wisdom of the Four Agreements and the principles of the Tao. And as they continued their lives, they carried these lessons with them, always striving to be impeccable with their word, not take anything personally, not make assumptions, and always do their best 
living in harmony with the natural order of the universe. But we're different. Wow, what an incredible journey. We hope you enjoyed exploring the unknown with our brave trio. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment with your favorite part of the adventure. Your feedback helps us create even more amazing content. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to never miss out on our next adventure. Thanks for watching and stay curious, explorers.